Would you guys rather suffocate or get shot? Get shot. Shot. As wait, it depends on where. Would you rather in the head? Shot. shot. There would be no suffering at all. Eaten by ants or suffocated? Suffocated. suffocated. Drowning or suffocating? Suffocating. It's almost the same thing. I know, but it's not. The year is 2012, the place, Star City, West Virginia. This is the heartbreaking story of Skylar Niece. <music> Skylar Niece was born February 10, 1996 in Morgantown, West Virginia, an only child to Mary and Dave Niece. In second grade, Skylar would meet Sheila Eddy, also an only child, the two would become the best of friends. They would go to separate schools until entering high school together. Soon the duo would become a trio. They would meet Rachel Shelf. Like Skylar and Sheila, she too was an only child. The three would partake in your typical teenage behavior, a little bit of booze, maybe a little weed, skipping school, staying out too late, etc. Before long, they would alienate themselves from their other friends as nobody wanted to be around them when they were all together. People close to Sheila and Skylar would claim that Rachel was a bad influence on them. She would be described as controlling and mean. As the relationship between the three progressed, Sheila and Rachel would become closer and ultimately Skylar would be the odd girl out, so to speak. They started to view her as more of an annoying little sister than a friend. Skylar and Sheila's relationship would deteriorate over time. Their arguments on Twitter would get worse and worse. And on a trip to Myrtle Beach in June of 2012, the two allegedly fought the entire time. Upon their return, Sheila would tell Rachel that Skylar, quote, has to die. Rachel and Sheila had also been overheard in previous months discussing the best way to get rid of a body. And one student claims they were specifically talking about Skylar. Would you guys rather suffocate or get shot? Get shot. Shot. As, wait, it depends on where. Would you rather in the head? Shot. shot. There would be no suffering at all. Eaten by ants or suffocated? Suffocated. suffocated. Drowning or suffocating? Suffocating. suffocating. It's almost the same thing. I know, but it's not. Despite the friction between Skylar and the other two girls, the three would continue to hang out. Skylar still considered Sheila her best friend. On July 5th, 2012, Skylar would return home from her shift at Wendy's around 10 p.m. She would kiss her mother and father goodnight and go to her room. Sheila and Rachel contacted Skylar asking if she wanted to hang out and go for a ride. Skylar would say yes and sneak out through her window and jump in the car with them. What Skylar didn't know is what was inside of the trunk. They had fresh clothes, bleach, and a shovel, and they were both concealing knives under their hoodies. The three would drive out to Morris Run Road, a secluded back road about 30 minutes outside of Star City. About a mile down, they would pull to the side, get out, and presumably start to partake in a little bit of smoking. As Skylar turned to walk back to the car, Sheila and Rachel would count to three and commence to viciously stabbing her. Skylar would fight back, gaining control of a knife briefly and inflicting a wound on Rachel's leg. But in the end, she would be overpowered by the duo. Skylar would be stabbed over 50 times. They both stood above her and watched her die, and Skylar's last word to them was, Why? Why indeed? Their plan was to bury her, but they did not account for the ground being so rocky, so they decided to place her under a big tree and cover her in rocks and branches. They cleaned themselves up and headed back home. The following day, Skylar's parents would go about their normal routine, leaving for work early. Dave, Skylar's father, would return home during the day to make sure Skylar had transportation to work. With no sign of his daughter in her room locked, Dave discovered a bench under her open window and realized that she had snuck out the night before. After contacting her friend Sheila and Rachel, and the two claiming to know nothing, paired with her job calling to see why Skylar didn't show up for her shift that evening, Dave called the police. Shortly after, Sheila would call back and admit that her and Rachel had picked Skylar up that night and brought her back home before midnight. Sheila would be very vigilant in helping search for Skylar, inserting herself into the investigation, while Rachel seemed to shut down and want no part of it. Both girls claiming that they went on a joyride with her that night around 11 p.m., but dropped her off within an hour at the end of Skylar's street. Surveillance footage was obtained catching Skylar getting into a car and leaving. Upon this evidence, police immediately chalked it up to her running away. In August of 2012, the case was turned over to the FBI and the state police, and immediately after interviewing Sheila, suspicions grew. After interviewing Sheila and Rachel, their stories matched up almost too well, suspiciously well. They seemed rehearsed and scripted. And after viewing surveillance video and cell phone records, it was clear that their stories didn't make sense. In late December 2012, Rachel would have a nervous breakdown and be taken to a psychiatric clinic. Upon leaving the clinic on January 3rd, she would go straight to the police. It seemed she had cracked. Her first statement was, we stabbed her. As part of her plea deal, she would lead police to Skylar's body. It was recovered on January 13th, 2013. Authorities then matched the car from the surveillance footage to Sheila's. She was not arrested right away as police wanted to be sure she was telling the truth and they used her to try and get a confession from Sheila, which was unsuccessful. Shortly before her arrest on April 1st, 2013, Sheila Eddy tweeted one last time, We really did go on three. Meanwhile, Rachel turns herself in to the authorities. 
Nobody truly knows why these girls did what they did, and their only answer was that they just didn't like Skylar anymore. Investigators believe they did it for the thrill, but only they truly know. Rachel Schoff would plead guilty to second-degree murder and in turn would get a life sentence with her first parole hearing in 10 years. On January 24, 2014, Sheila Eddy would plead guilty to first-degree murder and sentenced to life with a chance for parole after 15 years. Both women remain at Lockin Correctional Center in Mason County, West Virginia. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see more videos from 5 Minute Crimes, please comment below with any requests of what you would like to see. And like and subscribe as it really does help the channel grow. Thank you, and I will see you soon in the next video.